I was late in life having a son. He said a blessing the other day. He said, Dear Lord, bless Mommy, bless Daddy, bless my grandparents. But Lord, will you kill some of those damn birds? Turns out if Bob's son had gotten his wish, those dead plovers would have had company. There's tons of predators out there, and their solution to all this is to kick the people off the beach, kick the vehicles off the beach, and then trap and kill any of the predators that are out there. They have literally killed thousands of animals. When you go to bed at night, the traps are getting set. When you wake up in the morning, they're killing the animals. The lady that goes to my church actually was there with her children when they saw this park service kill this fox on the beach. And they say uh, foxes aren't native to here. How do they know what's native here? When you remove uh, a predator from any environment, things get out of balance. Mm -hmm. I witness the trapper daily in this park. Two types of leg traps that indiscriminately will trap any kind of animal. Um, who's to say a bird might not get caught in it or somebody's pet? This has happened. We have actually seen traps with feet left in them where the animals have gnawed their foot off to get out of the trap. I just can't even really believe that this is happening in the United States of America. There's some lady in Kansas right now, 78 years old, reading the paper that says, there they go, they're running through the dunes, they're riding over bird nests, or, or they're killing this, or doing that. There's nobody doing anything like that out here. And some poor lady in Kansas is getting fooled again. She's sitting there writing Audubon a check. These uh, Audubon people, um, the defenders, call themselves defenders of wildlife and are out there being the cause of hundreds of other wildlife being killed. It just doesn't make sense. Killing hundreds of animals in the name of preservation doesn't make sense. Implementing harsh restrictions that have proven to be ineffective, even environmentally damaging, doesn't make sense. And if it's so critical to keep people and vehicles off of these beaches, if the damage it does to a bird is so irreparable, then why is it okay for the park services and environmental groups to walk and drive within the enclosures? It makes you wonder what's really going on. We're in our second lawsuit, the first one we won. It was sent back. They believe, and this is their foundation belief, that the animal is, uh, should have rights over the people. They've given animals rights and taken it over the people. You've got a bureaucracy and park service that is rolling right over my community. They do not care. They're here more of a harassment than they are to do anything for the, for the environment. But they're getting more extremist, more militant. Uh, it's more anti-people. Because I've always been, you know, uh, a law-abiding citizen. I've never felt any harm or anything like that towards anybody at all. But I'm the one that's being misused and abused in this scenario. It is a, an opportunity to slow down business, to take over property, and to, to do away with people's rights. It's, it's kind of a sad thing, you know, when you feel like you're not part of the government. But, you know, especially when you watch the news and you hear uh, the public referred to as civilians. To be called a visitor I find exceedingly offensive. Given that I have four generations buried in family cemeteries and that my ultimate final wish is to be buried in my family cemetery so that when my island washes away, I go with it. This island to me is my home. The people here are my family. You have to think that maybe the other side is a, has a dual agenda sometimes. So that lends again to the thought process that they're all hand in hand trying to just do away with us. We all feel like we're getting squeezed out. I mean, I went to the early bird meetings early, very early on and uh, heard the Audubon get up in front of the town folk and say that they wanted to see the beaches closed. Their goal is to cook, is to close the entire beach, the Audubon Society. Year-round, from Oregon Inlet 
to you, Okra Coke Inlet. This is what they want. This is what they've said. I've heard them say it. Maybe they're just trying to get rid of us, or maybe they're just trying to turn it into a bird sanctuary or something like that. This is not a bird refuge. They have the National Pea Island Wildlife Refuge right up there. When you start killing everything and removing everything else except the bird, uh, what else can we think? Right now, the future is so unknown, uh, you know, so uncertain for us all. I would like to say to you that I'm, I'm comfortable that I'll be here five years from now, but I'm not. We all kind of feel like that something's going to happen tomorrow. They're going to pass some new law or something like that, or something's going to happen that's going to, you know, affect us all and get us out of here. For Hatteras Island people, the beach is our habitat also. The beach is what gets the tourists here. The tourist brings us money. For us to be able to live on Hatteras Island and to survive here, we need the beach to be open. To sit here and watch a community destroyed, if I had to move away from here because nobody could survive or the Audubon Society just keeps wanting to destroy us, what is their agenda? Do they want to turn it into their little private park? We can work with the animals. We can all have that habitat together. But the balance has been shifted now. This park was put here, it was created, it was enabled by Congress to be a recreational area. It was said, this is here for the recreation for people of the United States. It's not that. The, the, the future envisioned by Park Service and the bureaucrats is going to be without people. I just, I just, can't, just can't even fathom moving away from here. This is, this is my home and this is my life and uh, it's hard to even imagine being a, having to move away from here. But imagine it, you guys, everything's packed up, you're in the car, and you're, you're crossing that bridge for the last time, you know it's the last time, and everything is behind you. Where are you if that ever happens? I'm a crushed soul. Yeah, I'm a crushed soul, that's what I am. Kim could be my sister, your daughter, your neighbor's wife, your best friend's mom. These people are your family, Americans. Decent people who were minding their own business when an agenda-driven group of opportunists muscled their way onto Hatteras Island and drew a target on this community's back in the name of the environment. A noble cause by name, but the actions don't make the cut. Wrong is wrong, no matter what flag you're flying. Are these people careless with their environment? You heard for yourself how well they're doing without it. What do they stand to gain to abuse it? And where's the proof of that abuse after generations of living here? I'm just a guy from New York. I don't fish, I don't boat, I don't recreate on beaches, I don't do causes. But I care about these people. And they're running out of time. Maybe it's time to do something, because if we don't help these people, who's going to be around to help you or me when it's our turn to weather a blow? It's easy to see why you take it from me. Beauty is so deep, take it for your own. When we come together, no matter of the weather.
fight for your right.